All right, what's going on guys? Try back again. I'm here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a video review of Batman The Dark Knight Rises on Blu-ray. So specifically, uh, going over the Blu-ray release, which was just released uh, this past week, uh, just in time for Christmas. Obviously, they would have wanted to get it out because a lot of people probably are going to want to get this. It's going to be a hot item for Christmas. Uh, and most of this is applicable to the, uh, the DVD as well for what I'm going to review and say. All right, so yeah, for me, I was really, really excited to get this uh, on Blu-ray. Um, obviously, after the movie came out in theaters, was waiting for uh, a really, really long time. It was in theaters for quite a while, though, uh, all the way up until, I think, September. It was still in theaters, uh, so we only had a few months between it being out of theaters and on Blu-ray. I went to see it three times at the theaters. So, um, obviously, I'm a pretty big fan of the movie. I do like it a lot, and uh, I have only watched it once so far on Blu-ray, and probably won't watch it again very soon, if uh, if anytime soon at all. Um, now, how does it look on Blu-ray? Well, the first thing is the movie looks amazing on Blu-ray. It looks better on Blu-ray than it did on a regular uh, screen. IMAX is probably, probably if you got a good seat, uh, is better in IMAX. But, you know, for home viewing, this is stellar, man. Absolutely amazing. Uh, everything looks awesome. The shots and everything, uh, the way they filmed it in IMAX camera, all the canvases and everything with the characters, you can see you know, the huge environments and the huge backgrounds and everything. And it just really looks super crisp and super clean uh, in, in Blu-ray. Um, so the movie itself, if you guys want to see my review of the movie, I did actually two, a non-spoiler version and an in-depth one that's like 45 minutes. That's probably my most comprehensive review of anything ever. Um, so if you're interested in that, go to my channel, type in Dark Knight Rises, search for it. You'll find the video of the in-depth review. So this is not going to be too much of a review of the movie. But I will say for purposes of buying the DVD that for some reason, you know, let's say, how long has it been now? Six months after the release, five months after the release of the movie in theaters, that this movie for me, it doesn't have as much rewatchability as The Dark Knight did. And actually, this is a movie that because I think it's because it's so long, there's so many characters and so many different things happening. It, it is kind of difficult for me to rewatch it all the way through. I, I will use the scene selector on here, which is pretty cool, to watch the fight between uh, Bruce or Batman and Bane, which is really cool. Both of them are awesome fight scenes, the best in the whole trilogy. Um, as well as there's lots of other scenes, but there's a lot of slow parts in the movie. Um, you guys have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. And I think that affects, uh, you know, the rewatchability of it. Whereas The Dark Knight really feels like uh, the whole thing all the way through is just grabs your attention. It's just so attention grabbing and so enthralling. This here doesn't necessarily do that to me. There are certain parts that do, but um, as a whole, uh, I find that it's not as rewatchable as, the, uh, as Dark Knight, uh, just The Dark Knight. Um, so I don't know, you know, how many more times I'm going to watch it or anything like that. Uh, maybe just a couple more in the future in a while, but, uh, definitely, uh, kind of sick and tired of the movie already, which is weird. Um, but in terms of what else is on this Blu-ray, uh, it's got this pretty cool slip, uh, slip cover that is holographic. I don't know how well you can see it there on the camera. Probably not well, but in real life, it looks really, really cool. It looks like Batman is standing in front and there's actually some distance between him and the background. That slipcase comes off and you've just got the regular uh, Blu-ray there. Some stuff on the back here. Uh, to read it off, it says, uh, I'll tell you everything that it says it has on it. It's a three disc combo pack. It says it's got over three hours of bonus features, including the Batmobile where you get to see all five Batmobile uh, together. Uh, it says for the first time in history, but I think I've seen that before on something. <laughs> or at least I've seen a look at the other Batmobiles in the past for the, the other movies, so that's like useless for me. Ending the Night, a comprehensive look into how director uh, Christopher Nolan and his production team made The Dark Knight Rise as the epic conclusion to The Dark Knight Legend. This is really just like a making of. It's okay. It's it's kind of cool to watch and see how they did it. But sometimes for me, watching a movie, I don't necessarily want to see how they did it behind the scenes because it kind of ruins the experience for me. But, um, you know, that's that's okay. It's, it's whatever. But uh, I was really expecting uh, to see some deleted scenes on here or some extra footage or some extra things. And uh, very disappointed to find out that there is actually nothing uh, from what I could see. I went through every disc. I looked through all the menus. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything at all that 
would really warrant, um, you know, like me buying the Blu-ray versus just watching it online or something. I mean, the quality, yeah, that's cool. And for collecting, if you're a Batman fan, you're probably going to want to get it. But I really wanted to see some deleted scenes and stuff like that. Um, I heard uh, it could have been just an internet rumor, but um, people were saying that there's supposed to be like 45 minutes of deleted scenes. It was reported on some uh, internet news uh, sites and, and uh, YouTube channels and things of that nature. And there's nothing. There, There's absolutely no deleted scenes. There's nothing. Uh, at all. Um, the disc itself does look pretty damn cool. It's got the uh, the shattered bat symbol, the broken bat, which is neat, and then the black around it. So as you can see, it's see-through for the disc. So that's really cool. I really like the effect that they did on that. That's really neat. Um, very cool. That's the movie disc there. The special features look the same. It just says special features. And then it does come with a Dark Knight Rises in widescreen as well. So if you want that, so you actually kind of get two copies of the movie. So you could always buy it and give one to your friend or something if you wanted to do that. Uh, if they have a blue, or wait, this is a, sorry, this is a DVD video, just this one. Yeah, the, the widescreen is just DVD, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's really nothing else. Like there's featurette, there's character bios, there's like retrospectives where, they, where the, the actors look back on it with some cool interviews and stuff like that. But to be honest, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, the, the extra features are really, they're really non-existent on this Blu-ray release. Uh, it's You're really buying it for the movie itself. There's nothing really crazy on here like, oh my god, that deleted scene is so awesome. Uh, I Why didn't they include that in the movie? You know, sometimes you get stuff like that where you see a deleted scene, you're like, wow, why didn't they put that in? Uh, I can't believe they didn't put that in. No, there's, there's nothing like that. Uh, there was supposed to be a lot of stuff about Bane in deleted scenes. But again, maybe that was just an internet rumor. Or maybe they just couldn't get it into the release on time for Christmas or something. I don't know if maybe the Steelbook Collector's Edition has some of that or some more. i definitely like to see if there's any um, deleted scenes. And from what I've seen so far on this, um, Christopher Nolan still hasn't really said what the ending of the movie is supposed to, which direction it's supposed to go. I think it's supposed to mean at this point, after I've watched it a few more times and heard everybody's arguments, it's supposed to mean, pretty sure, that Bruce lives at the end. That's what it's supposed to mean. Uh, Alfred's not fantasizing or anything like that or dreaming. He is supposed to live, and that's what it's supposed to mean. But it's just shot in such a way that it, it seems unrealistic. And it's actually, I don't think it was intentional, actually, now that I've watched it a few more times. It seems to me like uh, that whole five-second timer thing or whatever it is, uh, you know, it... it it actually is supposed to mean just by the autopilot that he did survive. But, you know, if you break that down and you actually think about it, which you can watch some of my other videos about it too if you want to see what I have to say about that, it doesn't make sense. You know, so you could really argue either way that Alfred is fantasizing or he's not. But I think it's supposed to mean that um, uh, Bruce does survive at the end. Uh, that being said, I mean, like I... Like I said, I've done a full-length review and more in-depth than this, but uh, just to give my thoughts on how time has passed and how the movie uh, stands, uh, in terms of replayability, it, it doesn't do that well, to be honest with you. It doesn't. Uh, it, maybe it's because it's kind of like a darker story. It's kind of depressing, and uh, it's not as much fun as The Dark Knight was, where you have Heath Ledger as the Joker and that performance, and, and everything about that was the greatest thing for me I've ever seen the comic book movie. It was so much better than all the other comic book movies that have been released before it in terms of just everything, the directing, the acting, the, you know, the, the risks they took and, and the scenery, everything was just so much higher. It was like, an, it was like the first A-level comic book movie I can think of that didn't feel B-movie-ish in a lot of ways. It felt completely like, uh, you know, A-level all the way across the board. This one here, there are some things that feel B-movie-ish about it, like the whole thing with the bomb and then blowing it up and why did they wait till the last minute and why didn't they just leave and all these. You know, there's a lot of things about the plot that are not the greatest. I won't get into it too much, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, in terms of the, the Blu-ray, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get the collection, the whole set, you, know, you might want to wait for that when they release that if they haven't already. Um, if you don't have the others, uh, obviously, if you're a big Batman fan, you're gonna get it. But definitely for me, it doesn't have that replayability. I wish it did. Uh, for some reason, for me, uh, after only a few viewings, four total, I'm kind of burnt out on it. So that's how it is. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the movie as well as uh, the Blu-ray release. Are you gonna buy it, or do you feel like it's a movie that you can see it, but you don't love it, so you're not gonna buy it? Um, cause I could definitely see that. I was on the fence too, but then I saw the cover and stuff and I was like, oh man, I gotta get it. Just gotta get it. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev, once again, saying peace.